What's up guys? We are back with another review, taking a look at an entire wave of figures today because I can't not do these all at once and I'm very, very excited to actually dig into these. So you are likely aware that there is a new Dark Crystal TV show out on Netflix, Age of Resistance, and I am a massive Dark Crystal fan. I have been watching this movie for decades at this point. So this is like the media event of the year for me. Even in a year where we're getting a brand new Star Wars movie, I think I'm I think I've been more excited for this TV show and we're kind of doing a slow burn on it so we're not binging it. I'm about halfway done still and we've got new toys to talk about and these are coming to us from Funko. We've got kind of a follow-up to the reaction line that they did a few years back for the movie. So we've got a handful of figures that we're going to take a look at today. So we've got a couple of the main characters and a few other things. So we've got Rianne here and all of these come on kind of the same card. So you've got uh, the purple, the dark crystal motif with the Chamberlain on the card back. And in the back of the package, they all have cross-sell for the entire for the entire wave there. So we've got Rianne, we've got Deet, and then we've got Hup for the smaller figures, and he's kind of like the breakout star of the show, it seems. We've got a few bigger figures as well, though. We've got the Hunter Skeksis, which he is awesome in the show. Uh, very, very cool. And then we've got a new Agra figure. We've already got one of her from the first series, so this is a, well, it's not updated because this is her older look, but we've got an Agra figure. And then the last thing we've got is one of the Silk Spitters, which they're called the Arathim, if memory serves. So we've got one of the big, uh, like, Crystal Spider guys, which this thing is massive. In comparison to the rest of the figures, there's a lot of plastic going on here. And again, all of these share the same kind of card back design. They just happen to vary in size. So you've got this big Big one versus this smaller one. So they're all the same except for their size. But yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Let's pull these guys out, take a look. And here they are out of the package, our Age of Resistance figures. So this is the entirety of, well, maybe the whole line. I really don't know that there's anything more coming. I'm not sure there's any more Funko action figures in general coming after these guys, just based on some things that I've heard. So, you know, maybe take that with a grain of salt. But I don't know that, that there's anything more. So this very well may be it. And we've got some pretty solid figures here. Some pretty heavy hitters too. I think we're missing a couple in terms of maybe some of the bigger characters in this show so far, but I think that they've done a pretty good job of giving you a wide array of different figures, especially since we got this big guy here. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. And if you've got the first set of figures that came out a few years back when Super 7 and Funko collaborated on the reaction line, you've got a pretty well-rounded Dark Crystal set of figures right now. That makes for that makes for almost a full shelf of toys as far as I'm concerned. So let's jump right in and take a look. We're going to look at each one of these briefly, uh, individually, and then I'll also do a few comparisons to some of the other figures to give you an idea of what some of the Gelflings look like together and then like what the Augras look like, things like that, and show you what the Gartham looks like compared to some of these newer figures as well. So let's just do it. Let's just pick one and take a look. So I guess we'll start with maybe one of the main-ish characters of the show. Two of the big three Gelflings are represented in this line. So we've got Rianne here, and I think for the most part they did a pretty good job with this figure. I really like the earth tone style look that he's got going on here. Basically just a lot of browns, and you've got his kind of cape thing that is a rubbery piece with a lot of texture and nice kind of dry brushing effect on the back there. A lot of sculpt and detail on that one. I think the face is nicely done on this figure. It very much looks like the puppet. Uh, it's got some nice coloring. The eyes are very clean and crisp. These guys are similar to the reaction figures, but not exactly. So for the most part, they are very similar in style, in size, and then kind of just the idea of what you're going for with a three and you know, a three quarter ish style figure. But these guys are a little bit more articulated. So you've got a ball jointed head, but he can really only kind of just rotate because of how much hair he's got. Your arms go out at the shoulder and then they rotate around. You've also got a single jointed elbow. There is nothing at the waist on this guy. It kind of looks like there is, but nothing actually moves there. Legs kick around a little bit just because he's got the skirt piece, and then you've got uh, single-jointed knees as well. So he's not 5 POA, but he's also not over-articulated. He's just got a little bit extra. And then he's also got a few kind of key accessories. He's got he's got his uh, little short sword here, but the one that I really, really like, and, and to avoid spoilers, because obviously this, this is still so very new, 
he does have, and I won't say what it really is specifically, he's got this little vial here, which uh, has some nice paint applications, a little bit of sculpt on it as well. So it very much, it very much mimics what they're going for with what the, the, this thing is supposed to represent in the show. And again, I'm not going to spoil it because it, it's a bit of a plot point, but it wouldn't necessarily ruin your viewing anyway. So he's a pretty cool looking figure. He's very reminiscent of the Jen and the Kira figures from the first time around. The other of the big three that we've got represented here would be Deet. So another one of the Gelflings. This one is, again, kind of reminiscent of the figures from the first time around. But it's a more specific thing. So in the first wave of figures for the actual movie, we had two different Kira figures. One of them was in the mainline release, and it was just the figure itself. And then there was a New York Comic Con exclusive that was packed with a Gartham, and she came with her wings. I never did get that. It was incredibly hard to get a hold of. So I do, that's the one thing I actually don't have still. But we've got Deet here, and she actually comes with her wings. That's her accessory pack this time around. The other, everybody else in this wave, well, except for the Silk Spitter, has some sort of accessory, and she gets her wings. They actually just peg into the back on uh, on the figure itself, so you don't have to use them, but if you want to, you can. They seem to stay really, really well. I like the sculpt on them. They have a very, a very kind of ghostly butterfly type of look, which I think works really, really well uh, for this particular character. The only thing I'm really not too keen about with this one is her skin tone. I think it's a little too green. She's very pale and kind of almost kind of ghoulish in her complexion, but I think this is maybe a maybe an early look for the figure, or the character rather, where they maybe have changed things down the road, because she's definitely not this green, but she does have a little bit of a green tint. Otherwise, I think they did a pretty good job with the sculpt on the figure, and she definitely very much looks the part. There's a lot of kind of tattered and ragged clothing, and that's kind of her, because she she's from the underground, so she's a little bit different than Rianne. As far as her articulation goes, she's still kind of similar. She's got a ball-jointed head as well, but she really can't move much better. Her arms also go out. They rotate at the shoulder. You've got your elbow joint there, and then you've got legs that can kick a little bit within her dressings, and then, of course, you've got your knees. So she and Rianne are very, very similar. They're just kind of different in terms of their overall aesthetics because they're two very different kinds of Gelflings in this show. Next on the list, we've got Hup, our only podling in the entirety of the line. And this guy makes me wish we had a few more, honestly, because... They, they really nailed him. I think he looks pretty great. So as far as his overall look and feel, I mean, he's pretty much exactly what you think he is. He is just a little dude, very, very small in comparison to all the other figures, but he definitely looks the part. He's got a lot of ragged, tattered clothing, a lot of paint applications on this guy, and despite the fact that some of them are a little muddled, it honestly doesn't really detract from this figure because he's a podling, and none of them are exactly adorned very well. Now, as far as articulation goes, he's similar to the Gelf same kind of situation. So ball jointed head, but very little movement. You've got an arm that can go out, uh, rotate at the shoulder. You've got your elbow hinge, and then he's got kicks at the legs, and then you've also got your knee joints. Mine are kind of stiff, and they still kind of want to stick, so I don't want to test them too much, but they do have single jointed uh, knees down there. I just think that in general, he looks really good, and after what I've seen of him so far, I mean, he's kind of the favorite of the show, it seems, and I can understand why. He's a weird, goofy, garish type of little podling, very different from anything else that we've seen so far. And then he comes with his spoon and kind of his ladle here as well. So, again, very, very thematic towards this type of character, and I just wish we had a few more of them, a few generic ones, maybe a few enslaved ones or a few zombified ones like in the movie, just to have a few more. I don't think that's ever going to happen, but man, a guy can dream. Now, Agra is a bit of a different figure. Once we start getting into the rest of the wave, things kind of take a little bit of a different turn because they're all quite different from everything else. We already have an Agra figure, or, well, you might have one. I've got another one from that first wave, and they are not the same, really, by any means. And not to mention the fact that they have very different looks. They're just not the same figure. So this one is pretty interesting. So this is kind of a slightly younger Agra, although she is still terribly old. There is a great deal of sculpt on this thing. She is covered in texture detail. She's got a rubbery outer cloak, which has kind of like the great conjunction type of uh, runes and everything all over it. So there's that. It's uh, It just sits over top of her arms. So as you move her arms up, it kind of tightens a little bit, which really works to keep everything in place almost. And then you've got her cane accessory here, which she can hold better in her left hand than in her right, although she can hold it in 
in both. And I just think that in general, they've got the sculpt and the paint on this one down really, really nicely. I love the ram style horns that stick out of her head. That's always been kind of a, a defining characteristic of this one for me. Her articulation is a little different and a little limiting, really. She's mostly just a brick of plastic because she doesn't really have anything down here. She's even got these little uh, feet imprints down here on the bottom because she has nothing down there, uh, just to give you a little Easter egg. So she's got a head that can move, but it really doesn't do much. Her arms can go out, but they are limited by the cloak. And then she does also have elbow joints as, as, as well, single jointed elbows. And then she does have a, uh, a torso twist. So you can kind of give her a little bit of attitude uh, by moving her around a bit, but she's really not meant to be dynamically posed. She's kind of a fat old lady, so it works really well for her to be just a big brick of plastic. But I think they've absolutely nailed that face and the clothing and the colors. And just the figure in general looks pretty stellar. Now this big guy is where things really change. So this is one of the Skeksis, and we have another Skeksis figure from the first wave from the movie. We have the Chamberlain. This guy is the Hunter, and I'm not gonna go into too many details about this guy in particular because again, this stuff is so very new, I don't wanna spoil anything. And really, I don't still know a whole lot about him because he, he hasn't been in the show too much for me yet. He is quite different from the other figures in terms of articulation, just because he's a different beast altogether. Not to mention the fact that his look is crazy, and he's also much, much larger. I mean, here he is next to Hup. It's uh, quite different. He is certainly not just a three and three quarter inch style figure. There's a lot more to him. So you've got this hulking, very agile, very strong Skeksis. He is kind of a thing all his own. And he's got his four arms in use. So that's one of the key characteristics of this guy is that he still uses all four of his arms rather than just two like all the other Skeksis. So he's got a removable mask and this is kind of his defining thing. He's got this skull mask, which I think is just awesome. Curious where that skull came from that it fits his head just perfectly, but you can remove this. And then you've got his Skeksis face underneath there with tons of sculpted detail. This guy has a ball jointed head. He does get a little bit more movement out of it so he can rotate and then up and down because there's really nothing in the way for him. He's got uh, as far as the rest of his body, nothing at the waist. He doesn't twist or anything like that, but he's got moving legs and he's got ankle rotation down here. So you've got that. Nothing at the knees, though. He's kind of permanently bent. And then the arms are a little different as well. They do go out at the shoulder, but mine really don't want to go out too far. And I think really I'm not sure that they could because there's just so much stuff going on up there. And then they can, of course, swivel in and out and you've got hinges at the elbow, and you've also got wrist rotation on the two bigger arms. The back arms are also hinged ever so slightly, and then they rotate, but they don't have anything at the wrist. They're just sort of back there, and you can kind of give them a little bit of flair, really. But I love the way that they designed this figure. I think he looks pretty perfect, honestly. I mean, for what this figure is, not to mention the fact that he's no more expensive than the rest, there is a ton of detail sculpted all over this guy, all these little bone adornments, the rags that hang off of him, you've got his tail, not to mention the fact that he comes with all four of his swords, and I mean, come on, it's a quad sword-wielding Skeksis hunter. You don't get much cooler than that when it comes to Muppet type of characters. He can hold all four of them pretty well. They are a slight bit loose in some ways, but if you've got him standing still, they aren't going anywhere. And I mean, you know, this is the one that I really wanted to get the most. I love the Chamberlain figure, and this guy is right up there with him for me. And he's got so much more going on just because of the kind of crazy nature of this guy. And I think Funko did a good job of bringing him to life in plastic. And then we've got the big boy, the biggest thing in this line so far for sure. Something that I guess I should have gotten a second one of now that I've actually got it in hand is the Silk Spitter or the Aerithim. And these guys are really cool in the show. They are really cool just as figures. And, and honestly, I mean, you could use this for a lot of other things. It doesn't have to be Dark Crystal stuff. It's a big black six-legged beetle spider type of thing. It's just kind of cool, kind of weird, kind of different, and, you know, I'm kind of up for that stuff for the most part. He is articulated pretty well, not overly articulated or anything. You've got the back legs that hinge at the abdomen, and then they rotate as well, both of these sets. They have nothing at the middle joint there. You've got rotation at the front as well, and then you've also got hinges up here. Mine are really, really, really tight, so be careful. This part right here is actually a separate piece. If you pull too hard, this piece will 
pop off. It's just glued on. I've already had to re-glue one of mine on because I was trying to move a joint that was stuck. So you've got a hinge that's here, and then you've also got a hinge and rotation at kind of the front claw type of arm. Then he's got a, uh, a head that's on a ball joint, so he can go all the way around, and then the front part is also articulated so you can rotate this whole thing. So he does move really well for what it is. I mean, for an $11 figure, that's what I paid, I think, $11 for this guy. He does move really well. Frankly, I just thought he was going to have some hinges at those legs and that was going to be it. But I do think he moves really well. I would just urge some caution when you're trying to move these front kind of pincers or a uh, feet or whatever they're supposed to be around because I have had some issues with mine being very, very stuck. Otherwise, this guy is really just kind of like a big hunk of plastic. There's not tons and tons of paint on him. He does have kind of the inner workings exposed right around here, a little pink on him, a little dry brushing right there. And then you've got some extra sculpt and detail for the, the mouth and the kind of mandibles that stick out at the side there, as well as just a little bit of pink for those eyes. He looks really cool. I mean, that's ultimately all it's about. It's a big very, very dark crystal type of thing, very evocative of a Gartham type of look, just very, very different. And it's a gr gruesome type of creature, terrifying type of thing in this universe. And I think it's done pretty well in figure form here. It looks good, moves pretty well, and it's got so much size in comparison to the rest of these figures. It really brings through the type of scale when it comes to the various races that they're representing here. And then, like I mentioned, here are a few comparisons just between a couple of the other style of figures. So we've got the Silk Spitter with a Gartham. They're not exactly the best things to be comparing. Well, maybe, maybe not. But you can get an idea of how these beasts kind of stack up to one another. They very much look like they fit together. There's no real delineation here between lines. Even though these are not necessarily the exact same toy line, they very well fit together. I think the aesthetic comes through really well, especially with these two. And then here is our new Augur on the left and our old on the right. And you can see that while it's very obvious that these are the same character, they very well look quite different. I'd say these are the two that have kind of the most disparity amongst them, just based on the fact that the heads are so different. But the figures themselves, I mean, they still kind of go together. It's just not quite as apparent as, say, the Gelflings. And then lastly, here is a Gelfling matchup. So you've got Jen from the movie and Rianne from the show. They very well look like they go together. The finish is still a little different. The reaction style figures are a little more matte in their paint scheme. But obviously, these are both Gelflings. They could certainly go together just fine on your shelf. The only real difference is that one of them has a little bit more paint detail and has a little bit more articulation. So overall, I'm really happy with these figures. Again, I'm very biased because I love the Dark Crystal. It's been one of my favorite movies for as long as I can remember, and I have been chomping at the bit for this show since the minute it was announced. I love that first wave of figures. These are just as good, although they are, of course, slightly different because they aren't that true 5 POA reaction style, but they very much fit in with those figures. The, the aesthetic is still very much there, and I love the fact that they gave us such a wide array of figures. I kind of wish they would have given us the third major Gelfling. I kind of wish we would get Brea in this line as well, but I'm very happy with the assortment we got. Glad to get a Podling. Love the Hunter figure, and I'm glad that you were able to give us a beast as well. It'll go, that Silk Spitter will go very well with my two Gartham soldiers. So if you're a fan of this show, of the movie, I would say snatch them up. They're definitely going to be a welcome addition to your collections. So that's going to do it for this look at the Funko Dark Crystal Age of Resistance figures. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.